Hello everyone, welcome back to my RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video we're going to once again try to make orbit around the moon using our Ariana 1 rocket now with the Blue Streak engines, the RZ2s I believe we've got on RZ2 Mark III right now. And unfortunately I had intended to use the Viking engines but it didn't seem like they would work out for us on this rocket. But don't worry, we will be using the Viking engines for other purposes. I already have a larger rocket designed using them. I didn't want to unlock them right now before we actually need them. Uh, it costs 105,000 to unlock them. I mean, but you know, eventually it'll be fine. Uh, the other rocket will make use of ELA-4. It has a 180 ton core. So this is a rocket that is 150 tons altogether with three cores. But the new rocket uh, called Deneb uh, after Vega, you know, uh, even though it's nothing like Vega at all, uh, since the European Space Agency decided to name a rocket Vega, I decided to name a rocket Deneb. And uh, the Deneb rocket will be 180 tons in its core, and then it'll have boosters that will raise it to higher masses, and then we'll see what we can do with that. Uh, so that will use the Viking engine. And the reason why it would use the Viking engine instead of these, even though I found these preferable, is that the Viking engine is good to cluster. Uh, we, it is much tighter and it doesn't have bits sticking out. These engines do have bits sticking out and so since it's easier to cluster the Viking engines that means it makes sense to use it on the larger rocket. Anyway, so that is forward looking quite a bit and we're just going to try to aim for the moon once again and hopefully this time we'll make it. Uh, but you know, things can happen. I've also hired the rest of the staff for ELA-4. So now we've got a uh, full complement at ELA-2 and ELA-4 and we'll build Ariana 1 rockets at both uh, just in case. And then we also, we don't have anybody at the hangar right now. So that's our entire staff there. So Captain Kirk in the comments told me that uh, we should get rid of these and because the, if they've collected the signs Kerbalism will not allow us to collect the science. If they've collected the science and haven't transmitted them, uh, we won't be able to get that science. Which is sad because I always like to see how much I can push this as far as the clutter is concerned. But alright, we'll uh, get rid of everything that is orbiting Earth right now. and But not our interplanetary ones. The ones that were accidentally ejected, we'll uh, leave them be for now until we intentionally do that. But since we did leave them collecting science, potentially if they still have power, especially the last one we launched, which I think might still have power, uh, that means that they'll be occupying that science potentially, I think. Let's just take a look. Temperature scan. Well, it doesn't say anything about Oh, uh, yeah, uh, around the sun, space high, it's already collected 8, but it can't transmit it. Maybe I should just get rid of everything. That's a bit sad, though. I don't like doing that. But, yeah, we'll just clear everything. Okay, here we go. We are all lined up. Maybe I should put lights on the rocket, honestly. But, anyway, I don't know if we've unlocked lights, to be honest. Maybe, maybe not. SAS on, throttle is up. Oh, it's working today. All right, ignition. But two engines are not. Okay, okay, okay. Um, which one was actually working? The central one was actually working. Both booster engines did not work. Well, I mean, they're new, these Blue Streak engines. So, alright, fair enough. Let's roll back, try and fill around with them. Uh, our scientists just made a breakthrough. Uh, we had some power tools, simple organism, egg growth. Something like that. Uh, I might have time warped a little bit too much. Okay, so daytime launch opportunity heading a bit southeast, uh, which isn't great from Guru, but it'll be okay. Throttle up, SAS is on, ignition. Okay, they all lit this time. And launch. Oh, but that's not right. <laughs> I don't know why that happened. Curious. Let's do that first. Yeah, that was a lot of velocity going one side. 
What's that about? Well, because of that, I've gone up steeper than I normally do. Okay, booster set. Sort of wiggled still when when the boosters cut out. Okay, separation of ignition and fairings so that we get avionics back. I'm a little bit confused and concerned about our Delta V situation. Um, I think something was up with one with the first stage engines. I'm not sure what exactly. They didn't have any indication over there, but we're, we're not apparently at the performance we ought to be. Oh uh, yeah, we have not made orbit, and I'm a bit confused. Well, test flight has lost track of those engines. Did it say anything here? No, not... Uh, well, uh, it says something failed with loss of thrust. I didn't see any indication over there about that. Well, we're probably only going to do a high orbit this time then. And I suppose we should do that. Oh, we've lost- oh, I forgot to extend the antenna. Oh well. Well, this has been problematic. <laughs> this has been problematic anyway. Uh, it'll deorbit itself. Let's just call it a model again. It's not- it wasn't gonna do what we wanted it to do anyway. Back to Space Center. Well, we have another one ready to go anyway, so rolling it out. But this time it'll be a nighttime launch. Okay, here we go. SAS on, throttle up, and ignition. It says three engines. And launch. I checked the video. We It said the right max thrust down there. But maybe one of the engines had the wrong ISP. But then it would give a wrong thrust, wouldn't it? I don't know. Okay, booster set. No weird wiggle this time. Okay, separation and fairings. Well, since we're in space and before I forget again, Neutron 16 extend. Don't have a whole lot of stuff on here because we're trying to make orbit. But, I mean, we could probably pack more than we have. Just to be conservative about it. Okay, we have made orbit. We're just boosting up as it does. Relative inclination seems fine. Alright. That one turned a little bit pink, but I think that's just because it's out. Okay. Well, I could have waited a little bit longer. <laughs> uh, we're going to have to overburn a bit. To hit the moon. Next stage has plenty. Or actually just about the right amount. And getting there slower is not a bad thing. It'll be tough to stop it in time like this, but we'll see. We'd have to capture somewhere around here to still have comms. At our burn point we should be in communication with Kuru. Or maybe Keto. I don't know. We might be in that weird middle ground between the two. That's gotta be annoying. Okay, separation and ignition. And okay. All right. Well, 4.5. The decoupler might do that. So that's okay. And it was deviating a little bit anyway. All right. Oh, well, we just lost communication. <laughs> uh, Searchy between Keto and Kuru. Maybe I should toss it up a little bit higher so that... Actually, we're getting Bermuda right now before we get Kuru. Well, that's fine too. Um, yeah, we might want to toss it up a little bit higher in the future. Okay. Well, I might as well see what the decoupling does anyway. So... Okay, unlocking controls. Now, where are we? We're too far. We're way too far. 
Well, that's why we've got an engine with two ignitions here. Okay, let's try and turn to that node. Okay, throttle up and go. And stop. Okay. Let's see. Okay, should we go a little bit more? Okay. It's got one more ignition, it says. Okay. So, oh gosh, it went too far. All right, well, let's say over here where we might still be in communication, we capture with the amount that we have left, which should be 400 something. So it'll be something like that, and we'll still have a periapsis of 70 kilometers. Actually, right now we're crashing into the surface, so we'd better do that. This is not the ideal spin axis, but it's okay right now. Oh, there it is. Okay. Below 5,000 kilometers at one of the apoapsis. Oh, no. Okay, well, we're going to have to be a little bit better than that then. Okay. Well, you know, I think I can push this closer to periapsis so we don't have to do as much radial. You know, the periapsis that has us crashing into the ground, that periapsis. Well, now we're just 16 short. Well, we'll see. Well, I'm going to try and use some of the RCS in this direction. I'm trying to help our main engine ahead of time. Now it says we have one meter per second extra. Okay, go. Let's see if we get a good orbit. We've captured, though probably in a crashy state. Okay. Okay, uh, no, you don't need to do anything. I think that's okay. Yep, we just have to hang on. We need to transmit some science too, though. Well, it's running the visible imaging, so that's okay. Okay, okay, we got the three credits and it is satisfied. We will keep collecting stuff with this. All sorts of little visible imaging that we can do. But we've completed the lunar orbiter contract and we should be able to complete the lunar orbit, or lunar program, the early lunar probe program. Well, yeah, there's nothing pending right now, so I'll leave it be and it will stay in orbit and it looks to be powered it'll tumble a bit but uh, it'll recharge I think uh, we uh, we're nowhere near the deadline though for the early lunar probes so the only thing the only reason we want to complete it is so that we could pick something else up there's no the only cute one slot one is the targeted satellites See now, we need to do the targeted satellites in order to do geostationary communication network. That gives a fair amount of money. You know, this other lunar impactor contract still gives 15 science. <laughs> I mean, we ought to do that, right? Just for the heck of it. This lunar orbiter gives us a lot of uh, reputation. Let me get this lunar impactor and this. Oh, it's not allowing me to do that at the same time. All right, we're gonna impact the moon to get 15 science. And um, I'd like to get some other science along the way. So we're gonna put the long duration experiments on board. Okay, so we have two rockets building. One is intended to be an impactor, the other an orbiter. And I've just realized that I unlocked the wrong thing. Well, I wanted to unlock that because it was required for this uh, science stability, which I wanted because we could get hydrazine things. Uh, but this does not help us unlock these down here. It's this one that unlocks them. I got fooled by the early human spaceflight part. There's materials and there's electronics. So we need eight more in order to unlock this one, 
which will give us a researcher efficiency upgrade, but more importantly can allow us to unlock all these things. Though there's not that much in each of these, but you know, the infamous orbital perturbation experiment, very important to us. And there will be the possibility of avionics upgrades again, and comm upgrades again, and so forth. So yeah, I think that's probably a high target. Though this is not too bad. It depends on exactly how much science we gather. But I mean, we're got, we're aiming for 15 right away with the impact, and we're going to use the same thing that we used last time, except with different science built in. But they could get other science along the way, and we'll see. So 15 would allow us to get that right away, and then if we can get some eight more, we could also get this. So, but right now we're not unlocking anything. We did get some extra credits for stuff that our probe is already doing, so we're at 15.8 already. Um, well, let's start something out while we're on our way. Let's just go with this. I don't like the two ignition part, and it's really, really tiny, but you know. It could be useful. Very reliable, apparently. And hydrazine. Hydrazine with decent efficiency, too. All right. Okay, so we want the other 17.2. Okay, looks like we get to launch in daylight this time. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. Okay, and launch. Looks good. We've still got the orbit capture engine, so we have more delta-v than we need for this purpose, for the impactor. Definitely pass the speed of sound. And this way, if it has some science left over in it that it can't transmit, well, it's gonna be destroyed anyway. So that's good. Okay, booster set. Stage set. Fairings. Okay, inclination is practically perfect this time. Alright, 0.05 degree inclination difference, 5,300 kilometers there. And let us extend the commutron before I forget, uh, not the solar panel. And we'll start everything, why not? Someday we're going to have a dedicated transfer stage instead of the Araby situation and then we can launch with much greater freedom. But for now, we because we have to have our apoapsis on the moon-facing side, instead of having a proper parking orbit, we are a little bit more constrained. With the good relative inclination, we should be able to smash into the moon very well. It looks like we don't need all the delta V in the stage again, though. Uh, on the next orbital, rocket, I've increased the size of our final stage there, our orbital stage, uh, to so that we can just expand the AJ-1027 stage. Okay. Separation and ignition. Now well, we're a little bit wobbly there. I didn't want to spin up as much because it takes so much to stop the spin, but that might not have been the best policy. Okay, that's probably overdoing it. Okay, yeah, that was a little bit messed up. Well, it left us with a uh, course to the moon. Not quite crashing into it. And we're definitely a little bit past. So when we eject off the stage, it's going to be worse such force yeah much worse okay well let's fix it and up cell fuel down and ignition oh no the engine failed okay don't do that failed to ignite uh, but you have two ignitions, can we try again? We can't try again. Oh, uh, well. Well, that attempt to smack into the moon 
Well, maybe we can fix it with the RCS. Um, I'm tempted to dump the propellant though. 44 meters per second. Yep. Oh, it's the nitrogen that we didn't need. Okay, well, we don't have enough. Ah, we probably messed up anyway. A little spin like this. And we'll get some science, hopefully. I don't think we're spinning well, uh, well enough to get balance here. Um, maybe we shouldn't run everything. Oh, that's still losing, though. Oh, well, it's still transmitting the stuff that we gathered from the Cosmic Ray Science and Magnetic Scan. Once it stops that... Okay, now it's all balanced. Well, I'll just leave it doing the micrometeorite detection. Oh, wait. Uh, it's going to smack into the surface, isn't it? <laughs> uh, our, our trajectory out of the moon is going to leave it smacking into Earth's surface. Well, I guess it doesn't matter in the end anyway. <laughs> just get what you can. Back to Space Center. Well, another one's already prepared, but I called it Lunar Orbiter. But it looks like, because I want that 15 science, it looks like we're going to smack it into the moon anyway. So it's not, it's going to be called Lunar Orbiter, but that's a lie. Alright, it is a nighttime launch this time. SAS on, throttle up, and ignition. And launch. Well, we're past the speed of sound, but we can't see a whole lot right now. Oh, there's a runway. Okay, booster set. And separation and ignition and fairings. We're in orbit. that's that all right so yeah we made the upper stage bigger the final orbital capture stage what would be the orbital capture stage bigger okay separation and ignition a little bit early now let's deviate it a little bit Uh, maybe I shouldn't have stopped it, but all right, let's take a look. We do have the luxury of... Oh, no, we definitely went too far. Why do we always go too far? I mean, it said we didn't have enough, but we ended up going too far again. All right, we'll try that in 52 minutes then. Just to make sure we don't do something when we might suddenly lose communication. Well, I'm gonna just eject the spent stage. Let's see what that did to things. Yep, didn't change anything, uh, but it's gotta cost a little bit more to do the correction. Max thrust. Micronewtons? <laughs> I don't think that's right, but okay. I think we've got solid Newtons here, but... Okay, should be good enough. I'll go with a low thrust option here. This has two modes, a low thrust and a high thrust mode. A 0.5 kilonewton and a 3 kilonewton. And we, we're not using as much burn time as it's got, so... To be able to do this in low thrust mode. Okay. That's probably fine for now. Okay, that's fine. Shut down avionics. Power is balanced. Science is happening. And let us proceed. Now we're normal little probe. Uh oh, uh oh. Electric charge is diminished. Why? Hmm, maybe it's got too much stuff going on as far as power requirements. Data, let's... Hold off on some of that. 
maybe hold off on that one and transmit these. Um, transmit. Okay, it's the magnetic scan is tough. Well, everything's tough. Okay, maybe just do that one then. Okay, no. It's better if we don't transmit for a little bit. Now I'll send out the micrometeorite detection, though it does take extra charge right now. Oh, the weighter's at ready at 33%. Okay, well, hmm. We seem to have gotten extra wear this time. Right? It's not supposed to be 33% after a day and 22 hours. I've been uh, lax in checking that out. But it looks like the reason why we're not balanced right now or recharging properly is because of this wear. I wonder why. Why would this one have more wear? The one at the top also has wear too. 33%. Okay. Our uh, newest Kerbal edition has trained up on the X-15 finally. Now let's get the moon science. We're gonna crash with that other science, but it's not that much. It's like 1.2. That's a problematic place to smack into the moon because we'll be out of comms. I mean, do we want to flip it for 60? But then we won't be able to relight this engine again. That looks pretty convincing though. I guess we should do that. Okay. Okay, here goes nothing. That's the right speed, but it won't recognize that until it's actually hit it. All right, just about right. Okay, well, we got our science. We got 30.2 altogether right now. All right, back to Space Center. And per our plan, let's get this early human spaceflight electronics research. And that leaves us with 13. I think we should get entry, descent, and landing so that we can bring back biological samples and that sort of thing from space. And maybe the film return capsule from space. So yeah, I think that'll be fine. Let's do that. All right, so with those queued up and our Kerbal ready to go for the X-15, but we'll definitely be sending a probe core with the X-15 plane that we have, the X-2001-P. We'll try that again next time and see how it goes. But for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.